Brother, you got a chance in any game. I fully expect. <laughs> and right on cue. <laughs> right on um, yeah. Brian? Yeah, Brian. <laughs> Hey, what's good, sports fans, and welcome to the latest edition of Tournament Talk. I am your host, Brian Skaronsky, and March Madness in full swing right now in the Buckeye State. We got the ladies dancing right now in the state final four, the fellas right behind them at the Sweet 16 in regionals. Tons of action coming your way right here, live and free on the OH Report this week. But first, let's talk about the week that just was. And to break it all down, I have got the OH family with me. Travis Berardi, Garrett Parlett, Storm Blunchley. Hey, there's all their beautiful faces right there. Uh, gentlemen, let's just begin with what we've seen last week. Districts for the boys, regionals for the girls. Travis, what stood out to you? Upset City across the way for boys. Um, we had Colonel Crawford, a team that all of us thought was going to make a run possibly to stake. It knocked off in their district semifinal to Willard. And then Western Reserve really crushed the hopes of Storm and his major upset uh, attempt there, rolling over the Cougars. And then what a game we saw on Saturday afternoon between Western Reserve and Willard. Uh, the Rough Riders coming back from a big deficit to get the big bucket and the big stop at the end to win their first district title ever. Uh, and then, you know, the Lucas Cubbies, that defense took them past the a South Central team they lost to earlier in the season. And then what a performance they had against St. Paul. Such a performance that Storm almost lost his voice at the end for the call, which was an amazing call by him, by the way, when Goose Wallace hit that layup. And then on the girls' side, Napoleon, you know, they went down early against Norton, a game that we were at, Brian. And they came back with a balanced effort, and they're on their way back to a state Final Four where hopefully they'll be able to play their games. Team of Destiny, I think. G-Man, what would you see last week? I was curious to see Colonel Crawford get beat, but really get beaten so badly. They really got dominated on all cylinders. Willard came out shooting the absolute lights out. As soon as the ball was tipped, uh, Trey Paxson was knocking down threes from really, pretty much wherever he wanted. And just the Willard upset, man, that was pretty crazy for them to go in and dominate Colonel Crawford. And then I didn't expect Buckeye Central girls to really go down at this stage of the tournament, but they did end up falling to Columbus Grove. And then Storm, I know that your bold prediction from last week didn't really pan out. Aside from that, what else uh, were the top storylines for you? What stuck out to me was definitely the Lucas Cubs once again, like Travis mentioned, their defense took them all the way. A team that I really thought was going to get knocked off, but we know how my predictions turn out. So, uh, you know, it was incredible to see them play. And, and man, they really have a, a group of hard workers down there in the, uh, in the Cub country. All right, well, let's uh, put last week where it should be in the past. Let's move on to the future, boys. And it's regional time for the fellas. And how about Western Reserve getting there? Chris Sheldon, he's been knocking on the door six times he had been to that district championship. Finally, he kicked it down. He's moving on to the other side. We get to see what those Rough Riders are going to look like at regional. So, Travis, you got to see the wild game against Willard, the comeback. They were down double figures at halftime. Slowly started chipping away, down seven to start the fourth. Uh, what do you make about what the Rough Riders did and their potential at regionals? You know what? Rawlinson, Scrotta, and company, they're a bunch of scrappers. I mean, Rawlinson isn't the district player of the year for nothing. Uh, just, you know, what a performance they had in that second half. You know, Willard, another, you know, early punch, just like they did against Colonel Crawford. But, you know, Western Reserve was able to ride that wave and then you know the second half adjustments that coach Sheldon made at the half just you know got them back on on key and they were able to you know make the comeback at the stops when they needed down late and move on the regionals you think the better team won that game g considering what we've seen from willard 
Uh, I, I do. I really think Western Reserve is the real deal. After the past few days that I've watched him play, they're a very good team. And I don't think Luke Rollinson, he, he needs to be guarded as soon as he passes half court. I feel like he can shoot it from anywhere on the floor. And really, even with the hand in his face, he's still a knockdown shooter. He averaged 24 at the end of the year, but he has already upped his game. He had 31 and 10 against the Flashes. Yeah, huge performance by him, and they needed him to. John Scrotta got into foul trouble early. He had to throw the team on his back. It wasn't going well for him, and he just slowly willed him out in front, hit a huge bucket to give him the lead, and then eventually made the game-winning rebound. So that kid, he's going to be a first-team All-Ohio, and no question in my mind. Uh, Storm, you didn't see Western Reserve getting past Crestview, I don't think. Is that correct? Well, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you care to extrapolate on your prediction? Well, yeah, I just had to take a moment of silence there for myself because I know I got called out at the end of that Western Reserve game. But, uh, no, I know they're the real deal now, and that offense just – they don't miss. They, it, I mean, you can play such terrific defense on them, and they still just won't miss. So it's going to be tough for any team to knock off the Rough Riders. And I'm told that we actually have a clip that we can play about – that response to Storm's prediction. Is that is that something we can queue up real quick? What do we got there? Who was it? Was it Luke Rollinson? Someone said something. Nah, I don't know what this black and white stuff is. I thought we had a cool video. Anyways, I do know that we have one um, that is featuring Chris Sheldon and what he did immediately i mean this is a guy that's been so close to getting regionals never had got there before finally he makes it happen and then we all seen it with our own eyes what a class act travis i'll let you go first on what you've seen yeah like i said the first time in what 58 years that they won a district championship and you know you'd think he'd be celebrating with his team the whole time he did get a little bit of a celebration but he immediately goes over to the willard bench and just consoles miles pinkston and the other players that are you know you know devastated after the lead that they had what a class act by him i know mark hazelwood took a shot from our game put it on twitter and it blew up but it, it should be it's it's the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat right there and chris sheldon just a stand-up guy what a gesture by him he should be celebrating one of the biggest victories in western reserve history but first he goes over and tells these kids you know what you gave it your all. It was a heck of a game. You know, it, it, it's, it's just sad that there had to be a loser in this one, but just props to him. Yeah, it, it was really awesome scene. It, it was cool to see that. But then moments after consoling Pinkston and company, he goes and jumps into Luke Rollinson's arm. So he, he was saving it. He had that ball of energy ready to explode. Just uh, thought that he would portray a little bit of class first, console some kids, and then get on to the party. Uh, speaking of Chris and his crew, I uh, had an opportunity to talk to him and some of his senior members of the squad. Let's go ahead and run that for you guys right now. As tournament talk rolls along, we now have special guests joining us all the way from out there in Collins. It is three senior members of the Rough Riders basketball team, along with their coach, Chris Sheldon, as we now welcome in Western Reserve Hoops. And there they are, Corey Hip, Luke Rollinson, John Scrotta, and I already mentioned Coach Sheldon. And gentlemen, I made the mistake on Saturday. I showed up at the event and I had on some, some Willard Crimson colors, and I wasn't even thinking about it. So today I'm representing my Rough Rider blue to try to make up for it. But I see Corey hasn't forgiven me just yet. But maybe by the end of the interview, he'll he'll find it in his heart. But uh, let's start with you, Coach. Talk to me about. I think this is what four straight Firelands Conference championships for you guys. You've been knocking on the door. You get through. Now you're on to the round of regionals. Does it for you in some ways feel like some self-assurance that you've been building your program the right way and you're incrementally taking the right steps? to uh, sustain success? Well, you know, I, we, we've had, a, obviously this is our 19th year here under, under my direction and our programs won 10 league titles and we've been in the district tournament 13 times. So, you know, in terms of building a program, I think we've already established that. I, I, I think more than anything, uh, what these three guys and their senior class have done have just cemented themselves at the top of the mountain. You know, they've set a standard here at Western that uh, has never been done before, not even in our, our own league with winning four conference titles in a row. You know, and, and then now they, they reach the pinnacle of, uh, you know, getting the first district title in 58 years. And so I think it just says more about these three and 
you know, what they've done individually and, and then what they've been able to get uh, to do collectively together as a group with this class and, and the rest of their teammates. Well, no one talking to Luke and John this afternoon. Uh, they have been members of the program for a long time, uh, came up as ball boys and such. Uh, let's start with you two. Tell me about the development of this program and what it has been like being a part of Western Reserve basketball throughout your entire careers. I mean, like you said, we started when we were at ball boys. Uh, Sheldon, same, he's been on the same way when we were at ball boys as we are, as he is now. So uh, we just kind of gotten used to, you know, how he runs things, and uh, we have been accustomed to uh, his uh, program and uh, you know everything it, it means to be. So yeah, I actually didn't get here until sixth grade. I was at Winford. I mean, kind of same culture it used to be down there, but really got introduced into another Sheldon up here. I mean, I was down close to Colonel Crawford, but um, yeah, it's cool being up here with Coach Sheldon and this how great the program is up here. And tell me about the satisfaction, Corey, of being a senior and uh, getting over the hump, man, and winning that district championship on Saturday. Take me through that whole progression through your eyes and how much fun did you have over the weekend uh, kind of marinating in that victory? Yeah, it was awesome. Well, just like these guys, I mean, We've all seen our fair share of district games and close games of us coming a little bit short and just being able to get over that hump this year and win one, just it's a crazy feeling. And for all of you, uh, now that you've had a little bit of time for it to sink in, I mean, almost 60 years before you guys had won your last district championship, but still, there's a lot ahead of you. I, I know that this was, you know, just another step on the way to potentially getting all the way to state and cutting down the nets at Dayton. So how much were you able to relish in the history that you guys accomplished versus uh, understanding that there's still a lot more ahead of you? Yeah, it was, it was a pretty cool feeling, but we understand that we still get to play again on uh, Wednesday and it, it's going to be awesome to get a chance to go win there and then have a chance to play Saturday for a regional championship, hopefully, if we're uh, able to win Wednesday. So just pretty cool feeling. Anyone else want to jump in and extrapolate on that? I think we covered it. I mean, it's just, it's just, I mean, I don't think it's really sunken in yet what we really have yeah. done. So um, it's probably going to take so long after the season to, you know, go back and look through what we actually accomplished and how, how great this group has been. Yeah, I mean, at least I'm sure that these two can say the same thing. I've thought about this for a long time. I mean, I used to dream about playing in district championships and the regionals, and now we're actually here. Just so real and doesn't really feel real right now, but it's a pretty cool feeling. Well, Chris, you told me after the win that you had a dance party for two waiting for you back at the house with your five-year-old daughter. Uh, did she have some special championship moves waiting for you? She, she bust out of anything original? No, she's pretty freestyle. Brian, you know, and so she she definitely dialed up a couple dances and, uh, you know, but uh, that little girl's got more energy than these three. I can tell you that right now. But, uh, you know, no, it was it was a good, good, good job. You know, the, the beauty of it is, uh, you know, it, we put a lot of time into this. And so, you know, there's a lot of time on the floor in the weight room in the off season all year long in the grind. And, and, you know, the, the one thing I tell them is get away from it. And that's what my family gets to do for me. You know, it takes your mind off the game of basketball, whether winning or losing. And, uh, you know, that that's important to keep the balance, um, you know, so you can continue to stay hungry, get refreshed and, and ready to go back at it again. And you guys were telling me that you had a nice little escort back into town after the victory on Saturday, had a party waiting for you. What's some of the chatter and the congratulations been like at school today as you guys are kind of like right in the middle of your uh, school afternoon? Well, you just feel like the big man on campus. And all of, I know some people decorate the hallways, there's signs everywhere and just trying to keep us motivated to go win another one Wednesday. Uh, what about on social media, since we're living in that age now, did you guys get any cool mentions or shout outs on the Twitter, Instagram or anything you hear from anybody cool? Yeah, I mean, I, I've uh, heard from friends, you know, former AAU teammates, everybody just congratulating me, um, you know, past players, players that I've played with, on, you know, 
uh, for Coach Sheldon with. And, um, yeah, I mean, everybody's just really happy for us. One of the coolest um, congratulations I've seen was probably from one of the last district championship winners as he congratulated us and said he's been happy to watch us. And that was pretty cool seeing him congratulate us. And they got to be approaching about 80 years old. So that, that, that's pretty wild to think about. Yeah. 80 year olds are on social media. <laughs> Who would have thunk it, man? 2021, nothing quite like it. Uh, well, hey, you guys are moving on. Uh, regional round, Division Three on Thursday. Going to take on Johnstown Monroe. Uh, Chris, break it down for me, man. What, what's the game plan? How do you get it done and move on? You know, uh, they've got two really good players. It starts with their point guard, and 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 you know, he's an exceptional athlete, about six two, six three. Can can dunk it any way he wants. Um, you know, he's really good at getting the ball to the front of the rim, either by taking you off the bounce or by posting you up. Um, you know, you don't see that combination in a point guard a whole lot. Uh, they can do both just equally as impressive. And then, you know, and then they're anchored on the back end by their center that's, that's signed full ride at Navy for football. Um, you know, 6'2 kid, huge wide body. His motor never turns off. Uh, you know, he's going to be a, he's going to get a lot of our attention as well. Um, you know, we're going to have to, as we do, uh, you know, in most of our game plans, really try to make things difficult for those their, their two best players, um, have them surrounded and making sure we put multiple guys running at them and, uh, you know, constantly putting fresh bodies on them. And then, you know, they got some nice shooters that go with them as well that you can't fall asleep on because, you know, they'll make you pay if, you know, you give too much attention to those other two. And, you know, they're a good team. I think it's a really even matchup. Uh, I think, you know, it's going to be another just great basketball game. And But when you get to the Sweet 16, that's what happens. You know, when there's only 16 teams left in the state of Ohio, you know you're going to play a good team. And, you know, they got to get our best effort for 32 minutes. And if uh, we can do that and be efficient and, you know, go out and try to execute the game plan that we're going to implement this week, uh, we're going to give ourselves a, a darn good chance of, of competing and winning a basketball game. Yeah, and you talked about that one-two punch that the Johnnies have. I would really liken what you have with both John and Luke to those two. So for you gentlemen, tell me, how much do you look forward to matchups like this where potentially it could be your play versus their two star players who could eventually move on to the regional championship? How much fun is it for you to know that that's waiting ahead of you on Wednesday? I mean, it's cool, but I think we just like as our five against their five. We don't really look into is the best player who's scoring the points. We just want to win, and we're going to do what it takes to get the win on Wednesday. So. Strength in numbers out there in Western Reserve. That's how they've been doing it all season long, getting after it, full 32 minutes. Gentlemen, you guys are a pleasure to watch, and we look forward to checking you out again on Wednesday. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. So there you have it with the Western Reserve Rough Riders, a team that you can watch live and free Wednesday night right here on the OH Report. Thanks in part to a generous sponsor who I just hooked up with a few minutes ago. So shout out to Prestige Pool up there in Norwalk, not even close to Collins, and they're still coming through to make the game happen. So we look forward to bringing you guys that live stream. Another one that we're going to have coming up is the Lucas Cubs. Tomorrow night, they have got a big one in a rematch, and some bad blood has been stewing in Bruin, I imagine, in Cub country. They probably wanted to see this team. Warren JFK is going to be the opponent, and that's right, Cubs fans. You probably remember them from that 21 nothing beatdown that they gave you over at their place in the regional championship for football. So we'll start at the other end, Storm. What are your thoughts after you've seen the Cubs play that amazing defense where they locked down a really good St. Paul team to get to this point, and what do you think their potential is? Uh, I think the uh, the the uh, sky's the limit here for the Lucas Cubs. I mean, their defense is just incredible, and that's been really the culture that uh, Iceman has uh, wanted to create uh, this whole season is just a tough uh, hustle defense, and it's just been incredible to watch them and watch them play. And even on offense, I mean, they have some skilled shooters. They're very patient. No one is selfish on that team. They move the ball around and, and get open looks, so they're just a fun team all around to watch. And I like I said earlier, I think the sky's the limit for this Cub squad. You agree, G? Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, when they got a defense like that, they held South Central to under 30 points. I believe South Central finished with 26, and then they held St. Paul to under 40. So when you got a defense like that, you're really going to be in, in any game that you play in. And Warren JFK definitely has a good offense, but 
Lucas, man, if they can hang around to the fourth quarter, they got some late game heroics from Goose Wallace and back to back games. He might be able to come through for the Cubbies again. I think this is a price that they got to this point, Travis, given that they, they don't have their top scorer basically in the history of the program, who or at least who we think would have potentially went over the top of Logan Nicewander. So the fact that they're here, I think, is cool just in itself. But can they get it done and move on to the regional championship? You know what? I think they can. I talked to Coach Iceman yesterday via text, and he said this is a JFK team that will they, – they will like the pressure and they like the – kick up the tone of the game. They like to speed things up. But Lucas has faced teams that have brought the pressure, and they've been fine with it. And this is kind of a carbon copy of the game against McDonald last year in the regional semifinal. You know, McDonald had that that score that put up, I think, 25 points a game. Well, this year, JFK is led by Cameron Hollibaugh, who averages 24.1. So it's that dynamic one score, and then everybody else gets their own every once in a while. But if Lucas can – do the pretty much the same game plan as they had in the last year's regional semifinal. And they can, you know, compete and be able to, you know, run their offense and get through that press. I think they're going to have a good chance with the defense that they have. I, I think they can at least limit hollow ball like they did with uh, McDonald's score last year. If you can defend like the Cubs just showed that they can do at the district round to come a bit against a couple of really good offensive teams, I think that they can do it as they advance. And I think a little bit of added motivation, of course, for Cub Nation when they get an opportunity to go up against some of those same athletes they've seen on the football field that dominated them when they take the hardwood. All right, let's move on now to Division Two, where the Shelby Whippets still dancing. They're moving on, partying like it's 1999. Let's go. Hey, Eric Will and I have been talking. He was on that team back in 99, the advance, and he feels like this is the best Shelby team that they've had since the 1950s, since Larry Siegfried thinks that they would annihilate his team back then. So I kind of believe in the potential of this Whippets team, but they have a really – Really tough opponent. And now let's start with Garrett because I see he's grimacing a little bit. They got to go up against number two, Lima Shani, who was the team that everybody was scared of last year in the tournament, but they didn't get a play at regional. So I know that they're going to be charged up. They're going to be excited to play. What say you about the Whippets' chances? I've really been doubting the Whippets all year long. And every time I do, they always prove me wrong. But man, they got a tough matchup this week against Lima Shawnee. George Mangus, their leading scorer, averages 31 points a game. That is a correct stat. And what a stat line, man. 31 points a game. That is almost unreal. But if they can slow down him, the next highest scorer for Lima Shawnee is under nine points a game. So you got to stop George Mangus first. It's a tough task. But if they do, I like the Whippets. So all they got to do is shut down a 32-point-per-game score, and they're going to be in good shape. What, what do you think, Storm? Well, I, I've seen a couple of Whippets games uh, with my own two eyes, and, you know, I've never really been wowed by TJ Pugh except for last uh, timeout when they were at Ashland taking on Norwalk. I mean, TJ Pugh really wowed me that game. And uh, if he can play like that, I think they got a shot to do some serious damage. But TJ Pugh and the rest of those boys down at Shelby are going to have to be playing their best basketball. I tend to disagree, actually. When I've seen TJ, he's impressed me more often than not. I think he's the best big passer that we have in the area. I mean, the kid probably is about six foot six. He just has such good handles that he gives you the illusion that he's a guard because that's what he plays. Travis, what do you think about the Whippets and their potential going up against Shawnee? Well, Storm and Garrett talking about Shawnee's one score. Well, they have to go up against two dynamic scorers in TJ Pugh and Cody Lance. Don't forget about him. But uh, going back to Pugh, he's one of the most dynamic passers, like you said. But underneath the bucket, it doesn't matter if there's two or three guys guarding him. He'll somehow still be able to make the layup, as we saw a couple acrobatic shots that he was able to go in against Norwalk. But you, everybody was thinking this game – was going to be a game against Norwalk, and Shelby just ran them over. They looked like a state contender in that district championship game. They had the lead from start to finish, and it felt like it wasn't even a game after the first couple of minutes. And you have defenders like Jeremy Holloway as well, who's one of the best on-ball defenders in the area. So he'll probably get that matchup with Shawnee's best scorer. But when you have TJ Pugh, Cody Lance, and then a defender like Holloway, I think they have a good shot to not only beat Shawnee, but make it to Dayton for a Final Four appearance. I've been saying all season long, I've seen Shelby the first week of the year that I feel like they're a top 10 team in the state. 
However, this is a tough matchup. This isn't, are you a top 10 team in the state? This is, are you a top two team in the state? So they're going to have to go toe-to-toe with one of the best, with one of the best scores that we have as well in the Buckeye State, like G-Man said. But so is TJ Pugh. I think he averages around 25 per game. Had a chance to talk to him. Three of his other senior teammates, along with head coach Nathan Loney, just a couple hours ago. Here's what they all had to say about Thursday night's upcoming game. Well, they were partying in Shelby this weekend like it was 1999 as the Whippets punched their ticket to regionals for the first time in over 20 years. And we've got four members of the squad joining us right now. Noah Rank, Grant Hyatt, Cody Lance, TJ Pugh, along with their head coach, Nathan Loney, who's over off to the side here. And gentlemen, first tell me about that welcome home party that you had. The community was waiting for you. You had some fire engines, uh, some police escorts. What's it like to be a part of Whippet Basketball right now? Any of you, go ahead. You are I'm sorry. Go ahead, TJ. I mean, it was cool coming back to the city and everybody being out of cars and yelling and all that. I mean, that's an experience I've never had, at Speak least. Up. And can you hear me? Speak up. Uh, yeah, it's an experience I've never had. And it was really cool to just have fun after a game because – all year, we really, right after a game, we really just go right back to work and never really get a chance to celebrate. So it felt good to celebrate this time. Uh, out of you four, who would you say partied the hardest on, on Saturday night? <laughs> Grant. Grant had a pretty good time. Okay, well, how were you taking in the festivities? <laughs> just on the way home and stuff, we were just all yelling, having fun on the bus, sticking our heads out the windows, yelling at our friends and family, and, you know, we just had a great time. Uh, what was it like today in class? Uh, obviously, I think there's a lot of excitement about this team around our area. It was pretty much all the chatter about Whippet basketball? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of chatter about our basketball team. We were getting a lot of congratulations, like from teachers and like other kids in the school. And like, it wasn't just us too. I mean, Carson Ingram also made it to state this weekend. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll have Coach Loney pop his head in. Uh, you took over this program just last year, Coach. And, you know, obviously you, you've taken the next steps this season to get to the point where you're in the round of regionals now. Where do you think most of the credit should go for you guys elevating your game, becoming a better team this year? Uh, I'd have to say, uh, you know, all the time and, uh, you know, time and effort these kids have spent in the off season with me. Um, you know, I'd say by the time this thing's over with, they're going to be tired of seeing my face for a couple months. So I'll probably give them a little bit of a break and, uh, um, you know, let them go enjoy themselves and, you know, enjoy the rest of their senior years and rest of the high school year for the year. But, uh, I definitely would say that the off season is where, you know, we, we've kind of elevated to get where we're at. You guys have been an offensive juggernaut this year. I noticed uh, over 12, 12 times this year you've been over 70 points. Uh, we'll start with you, Noah. In what ways do you feel like you put the most pressure on defenses and make it just tough to guard you guys? I know our guards put a lot in on um, the full court presses that we have. We make them turn the ball over a lot, which turns into transition points pretty often. So our pressure is just really good with Andre and Cody and TJ over here that are up in the front. They always force passes, bad passes, and turnovers, so mainly off that. Uh, aside from you guys' defensive pressure when you're in the half-court game, uh, TJ and Cody – what do you feel like you guys bring to the table that just makes it tough to slow you down? Yeah. Me and Cody have been playing together forever, and we both know that we're both capable of shooting the ball well, getting to the rack whenever we want. We just both think we have so much confidence in each other that we can just get to the rack at any time and score at any time. And we put in so much work that, I mean, it worked out for us. So we both have confidence, and we both just – no, our teammates can get us involved, and we can get them involved, and it just works out. Yep, and we got great shooters on the team, so we know we can pass the ball out, and we trust them to hit the shots. And for you, Cody, uh, last year you did not have a great shooting season from the perimeter. This year you've really elevated your game there, uh, there and I would say that you're probably one of the most improved players that we have in the area. Um, how much of a different player do you feel like you are as a senior compared to a junior, and what parts of your game do you feel like have gotten the most better? Uh, well, 
I put a lot of a lot of work into my uh, shooting this off season. I mean, last year I was shooting pretty bad from the three point line, and this year I'm shooting around forty percent from a three point line, and that's a real big improvement, especially shooting wise. So that's definitely my biggest improvement. And uh, yeah. All right, and Grant, you haven't been able to participate for a little bit, but you, you told me the pins are coming out. You might be able to get into the game on Thursday. Uh, just tell me how excited you are for a potential return to the action. Uh, you know, I'm real excited. I've basically been a cheerleader for the past month, been pushing these guys. So, you know, getting back on the court is a great opportunity because, you know, it's my senior year, and the way I went out isn't how I wanted to. So if I get another chance to play, that'd be great. All right, we'll bring Coach back on. And you guys so far during this tournament run, I mean, you're beating your opponents all by at least 20 points. Um, assess their performance so far up to this point. What are you seeing on film and then also in person? Uh, why do you think you've been so dominant thus far? Um, you know, I, we, we did a really good job of sharing the basketball. Um, you know, I, I think a, a lot of that comes, you know, we have great passers and, you know, all these guys have great vision on the floor and they love getting their teammates involved. and. Um, you know, we're averaging like 15 or 16 assists a game. And it also helps, you know, like Cody said, we have shooters on the floor. So it, it makes the game easier whenever you can drive and collect two and uh, kick it out to a shooter. It's going to knock, you know, it's going to knock down a three consistently for you. Um, and, and definitely our physicality. We've, we're a lot more physical this year than we was last year. And, you know, that comes with the time and effort these guys have spent in the weight room. Well, you guys were upset in your MOAC finale at River Valley. You had a chance to be back-to-back -back undefeated league champions. Uh, did that provide some motivation for you guys heading into the playoffs? Yeah, absolutely. You know, nobody nobody believes in good loss. Right? Nobody believes in losing, period. But um, if you do, you're not allowed to be a part of the program. We don't believe in losing, and um, we all hate to lose more than we love to win. So, um, But definitely, uh, you know, it, it give you, you know, brought everybody back down to reality and made everybody realize that, uh, you know, we, we are Superman. We're able to be beat. So, um, you know, every night we have to show up and be the best version of ourselves. Uh, for the players, do you guys buy into bulletin board material? Are you that type of group that you need something to kind of push you, motivate you? Does it make you a better team when you lose games like that? Or maybe you read an article or see people talking on a podcast that might be doubting you? I'd say so for sure. I mean, Shelby basketball all year has been honestly getting talked down on. And, I mean, it's a shame, but, I mean, we've proved everybody wrong. So, I mean, us as a team, we just listen to all of it and just take it personal and take it out on the next game. Well, your next game, you guys get a tough one, a pretty exciting matchup. You get the number two team in the state. I know they're hungry. They've been waiting for this chance. They didn't get a play at regionals a season ago, even though they qualified. Um how much fun is it to get a chance to play a team like this where you get to see, you know, some of the best of the best as you go on to the regional round? Uh, it's great to get some, like, it's great to play teams like that. It's always going to make us better. I mean, you're at this point in, uh, in the season, there's, I mean, you're making it or you're done. So you got to win. You always got to play your best or your hardest, I should say. Okay, because you can't always play your best. Uh, but uh, always go 100%. Yeah, you guys got super similar styles from what I've seen, too. They're a really high-scoring game. They pressure. They get up and down the floor. Where do you guys expect the game to be won? I think defense is going to be the uh, turning point in the game, and I think our defense can definitely be that. And they got a kid named uh, George Mangus, I believe is averaging 31 points per game. He's considered to be one of the top scoring threats in the state. Getting an opportunity to go head-to-head -head with a player like that, I guess I'll pose this to TJ. How much does that excite you and get you ready for a head-to-head -head matchup with another kid that's a high-potent scorer like you are? I mean, I'm used to it. I do it all summer long. I've played so much basketball in my life against – Get kids that are top ranked, top this, high in the rankings. I mean, rankings to me are literally nothing. So I think my team has a good chance to win. And I'm trusting my brothers just as much as he probably does. And I'm going to come to the table ready and fired up.
All right, well, Shelby versus Lima Shani, 8 p.m. on Thursday night. I know I'm looking forward to it. OH Report going to be in the building with a live stream. You guys got any last word for Whip It Nation before we get you out of here? No. We got this, buddy. Any shout outs? No. Uh, I'm going to shout out Joe. There you go. That's it. <laughs> All, All right, right. Joe. We'll, we'll, we'll let him know you said what's up, Grant. Hey, appreciate it. Shelby Basketball joining us today. So as you guys and our viewers just saw, I think the Whippets kind of downplaying the magnitude of this game a little bit, but they're they're calm, they're cool, they're they're ready for action, and I fully expect them to put on a show when they play Shawnee. Two teams that average over 70 points per game, so there's going to be a lot of fireworks. That's going to be a good one to watch live and free on Thursday night. All right, on Friday morning, actually, 11 a.m. tip-off, Napoleon, who a lot of people feel like it's a team of fate, a team of destiny. They were 27-0 last year. They get to the state final four, had the rug tugged out from under them by COVID-19. They are back back to back Mansfield regional champions. Travis, you've seen them play Norton last week to clinch the title, and they look pretty good. What's your thoughts on the Wildcats? They look pretty darn good. They have, you know, district player of the year, Taylor Strzok, but I believe Kaylee Ressler was the player of the regional. Uh, Strzok got, you know, she was guard. She still got her points, but it was Ressler that really showed out against Bellevue and against Norton. And then you add Sophie Chips, the sophomore that can hit from anywhere across half court. She had a huge couple shots to, in that comeback in the third quarter to take the lead against Norton. And then even Emma Pedroza, who she can do it on the defensive and offensive glasses, but she could also get the steal in the layup. She had a huge steal in that run that gave them the 12-point lead against Norton. But this team, they're a team of destiny. They have unfinished business. And, you know, in a state semifinal, a state final four with four of the top 11 teams in it, they're the highest yeah. rated one at number two. And I think they're going to be number one after this weekend. I think this is a team that can defend about as well as Lucas does. You saw what they just did to the competition here recently, and they're holding their foes on the season to about 34 points or less. They themselves score about 55 or more. So I think this is a dominant team. They're going to be a, a tough out for anybody. The one feather in the cap of Dayton Carroll coming up, of course, they basically get a play at home. Their fans only have to travel about five minutes down the block, and so do these players. They get to sleep in their own beds. Obviously, the Wildcats, as far away as Napoleon is, I doubt that they're going to wake up like 6 a.m. and then hop on a bus and go down and travel for that game. So just the unfamiliarity for them playing at Dayton, a place where they've never been to before, might be about the, the only thing that holds back these Wildcats. But they're, they're a fun team to watch, and they're, they're an inspiring team. I, I like how well and cohesive this unit is. Yeah, but if I could add something in, you know, in, in my interviews with them after they were cutting the nets down, I forget which player it was. It may have been a wrestler. They're excited to get that hotel room again. And just seeing how that, that, that right, fan base, yeah. the city the city of 8,500, oh, they'll get a, I, they'll wake up probably at 4 a.m. They'll be tailgating outside UD <laughs> Arena. You know, that city, they love their Lady Wildcats. They'll go anywhere. Uh, you know, they sold out the tickets at Mansfield Senior, and then there was another – probably thousand people watching live and free on the OH report. They'll do whatever. They'll they'll sell out their tickets immediately. I know I was talking to wrestlers, I, one of her family members saying, you know, thank you for everything you guys are doing. I said, oh, well, you know, we'll probably be in Dayton too. He said, oh, no, I got my tickets already for state. So, you know what? It may be, you know, a home game for Dayton, but they're going to pack the place from Napoleon as well. How bold is that? She bought tickets before her kids' team was even there. I love it. They got some swagger going on out there with the Cat Army. I fully expect them to get to that state championship game, and we'll see. Maybe they might even cut them down there at Dayton. We will have some type of coverage for you guys on Friday morning. Me and Travis are going to go down to Dayton. It's going to be an audio broadcast. We'll have the score up, and I believe that we're going to be able to have some snippets at least in between quarters with some updates so we'll, we'll have some fun live and free coverage for you guys then but first before we get there a long week ahead let's make some bold predictions boys about what is on the way but if i could can we just look back at maybe some bold predictions from the past maybe just last week all right well then convince me g-man and storm tell me for real tell me that evan hamilton cash and the boys are gonna get it done I got a little something here just for my Western Reserve fans. Give me, give me one second. Got to put something on for you guys. 
I'm bringing out the okay. L cap because that's what Western Reserve is going to be holding versus Crestview. Crestview is on an unbelievable tear. There's no way they lose this one. Evan Hamilton is going to have the game of his life. There is nobody on earth right now. Uh, mark my words on earth that can beat this Crestview squad. <laughs> well, turns out the team on earth that beat them was the next one standing in their way. And Evan Hamilton, the fourth leading scorer for the Cougars that day. Storm, <laughs> any words? <laughs> any words about that or their upcoming game, Brian? Well, Crestview doesn't have an upcoming game. Their season is now well, over. So well, if you Western's have any words about the prediction. Uh, <laughs> hey, I stand by it. I stand by my boys at Crestview, you know. Uh, they just ran up against a really good squad in Western Reserve, and hey, hats off to you guys. Uh, you know, you guys proved me wrong, made me eat my words. I heard I even got called out a little bit. So, uh, hey, congratulations to you guys. And uh, I got I got a pretty bold prediction that I think uh, you guys will like. Okay, so uh, you said hats off to Western Reserve, and you have to take off the L hat, at least for the Rough Riders for this week. But Storm, we'll let you go first, man. Go ahead, blow us away, spit some fire. What do you got? I know I just took the cap off, but I'm putting it back on. There's no way Western Reserve beats John down. Mark it down right now. There's no way. Don't disrespect me like that. Don't call me out on the broadcast. You're not beating John down. Just pack your bags. Go home. All right. So no <laughs> chance. Nobody on earth can beat this team this week. Nobody against the Johnny. What about you, G? What do you got for me? Uh, Brian, let's just do it again. I'm picking Western Reserve to beat Johnstown. I don't think Western Reserve is really going to have a challenge until the next round. I think they're going to blow away Johnstown. Hopefully I'm not in Storm's position that he is in this week, but I definitely got Western Reserve in this next up, uh, upcoming game. All right, not too bold of a pick. What about you, Travis? Um, go back a couple years, a Lexington squad going up against no state number one undefeated Wapakoneta, and what do they do? They knock them off, and then they knock off a state-ranked Bay team. I think this year's Shelby squad is better than that Lexington squad, and I think they will take care of business against Shawnee and then win their region to go to the state Final Four, and I also think Western Reserve is going to join them. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. That's a little bit of magic right there. And I'm I'm going to jump on that same bandwagon, Travis, at least with the Shelby Whippets. I think this is a team that's been overlooked all year. You could tell the way they were answering some of my questions in that interview. They feel like they don't get no respect. You heard what Storm just said. TJ Pugh doesn't blow me away. All he does is score 25 a game, grab eight rebounds, and hand out five assists. Uh, nah. He's the real deal. He's got a great running mate. And then they also have some key contributors that can come in off the bench. Some other dudes around them. They got some great length on the insides. This Shelby Whippet team is dangerous, baby. Might want to look out, Shawnee. All right. Um, what do we got next? Well, as you found out, Storm, I guess let's just go ahead and relive that if you are going to make a bold prediction, sometimes it comes with a bold reaction. Mons, baby, game winner. Hey, uh, tell your Crestview guy, not not today. Not the L cap today. <laughs> not the L cap. All right, so you heard it right here from the source. Not today, fellas. All right, so Luke Rollinson dogging you a little bit. Jude Munes had his pack too. So Storm, you got the L cap on again today. I guess we'll we'll see if you can you can keep it on. I, I mean I. Go out and prove me wrong again. I mean, we'll see if you can get it done. I, I, what you did to Crestview and what you did to me, that was dirty, man. I can't go with you guys if you're going to call me out like that. Uh, we'll, we'll see if you can get it done and, and make me put my money where my mouth is again. If, if I may say, I think this guy started it down here in the Luigi cap. But, hey, well, we'll see if it fuels and motivates him and gets him into maybe a state final four all right gentlemen thank you so much for joining me again this week it's always fun here on tournament talk but remember this is just to get you ready for the week ahead here's what we got on the oh report beginning tomorrow night how about those lucas cubs in a regional rematch with warren jfk we've got the best in the biz on the call brian harder Grant collins i'm going to be there too talking to a couple of people on the sidelines so you can watch that one live and free 5 30 is when that tips off and then the very next night we are going to have western reserve 
We don't have that yet on the graphic because we just locked that baby in. But Thursday, you can guarantee we're going to have those Shelby Whippets looking to punch their ticket into the regional championship game. And then on Friday morning, like I said, we'll have an audio production with your boy Travis Berardi on the call for those Wildcats going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dayton Bloom Carroll. But that's it for us for now. We'll see you on the next edition of Tournament Talk. Deuces.